The new executive series would not be possible without the tremendous support of our sponsors. Thank you to all of our sponsors who have continuously supported the LVDC mission during this time. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Lehigh Valley Health Network. Our premier sponsor, Capital Blue Cross. Gold sponsor, Fitzpatrick Lenson Buba. Our event sponsors, Boyle Construction, Clunk and Milan Advertising, and Olympus Corporation of the Americas. Thank you to our interview sponsor, Victolic. Our production sponsor, Countess Communications, and our hosts throughout the Lehigh Valley. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. We hope you enjoy the new executive series. On behalf of Capital Blue Cross, I would like to welcome you to the LVEDC Executive Interview Series. As a proud member of the Lehigh Valley business community, Capital Blue Cross recognizes the importance of economic development and the critical role that business leaders play in the growth and development of our region. That's why we decided to sponsor this important series so you can hear the visions and plans that keep our valley on the cutting edge directly from these key leaders. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, I'm Don Cunningham, President and CEO of the Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Meet the New Executives in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, this is the second segment of our series uh, due to the fact that we've had nearly 20 new leaders of major employers and companies uh, take a position in the Lehigh Valley in the last 18 to, to 24 months. And today we're really excited. We have with us Rick Booker, who is the President and CEO of Victolic. I want to give you a little bit of background of Rick. Rick's been at Victolic for 12 years. He just assumed the presidency and, and ch chief executive officer position uh, in January of this year as John Malloy, who we all know very well, went on as a chair of the board. Uh, but Rick has a fascinating background uh, before coming to Victolic and at Victolic. He is either the uh, co-inventor or the patent applicant on 21 uh, patents. Uh, he has a PhD in material science uh, from Virginia Tech, as well as a bachelor and master's degree in engineering from Rice University in Houston. Rick joined Victolic in 2009 as vice president of product development. Previous to that, he worked at W.L. Gore, a global material science company, best known as the developer of waterproof Gore-Tex fabrics, and previous to that, uh, interned both at DuPont and NASA, uh, and 21 patents. Uh, so you are now the uh, president and CEO, but you're very accustomed to being hands-on, research and development, innovation, developing new technologies and products. Absolutely. My entire career, I I've just have a passion for thinking outside the box, thinking of how we can do something different that adds value for the customers. And, and um, you know, you don't do that by yourself. You do that as part of a team and a collaborative team working together to. Yeah, it's a fascinating background and a fascinating trajectory into the top position. I want to talk a little bit first uh, about Victolic. <clears throat> in my experience, Victolic is one of our largest employers, major manufacturer in the Lehigh Valley, global company, 1,200 employees here, more than 4,000 uh, across the whole footprint of the company. But I think folks here in the Lehigh Valley aren't that aware of uh, Victolic. So I want to just take a moment to share with everyone the background. Uh, Victolic is a, a manufacturer and the world's leading producer of mechanical pipe joining and fire protection solutions. Uh, notable projects that feature Victolic piping, joints and valves include the Hoover Dam, the Eiffel Tower, the Beijing Olympic Stadium, and New York's uh, Hudson's Yard. Uh, the company, for those of you who don't know, is located on Kesslerville Road in Forks Township. As I said, uh, about 4,500 employees worldwide, including more than 1,200 here, and operating more than 40 facilities across the globe, including 13 manufacturing facilities and five uh, foundries. Victolic has installed more than 1 billion products, billion with a B, in more than 140 countries worldwide. Uh, the company was developed in London. Um, original, patent. original patent was in London. Came to the United States in 1924. Uh, became of the, part of the Lehigh Valley in 1967. 
uh, with a, a manufacturing facility here, and then moved the headquarters here in 1982. Right, right. right. So just a couple years ago, celebrated the 100th anniversary, and is still owned by the same family. It's still owned by the same family that started the company over 100 years ago. So, and it's a blessing to be family owned, to be privately held. Um, we don't worry about Wall Street. We can invest for the long term and um, make good business decisions, not good quarterly decisions that Wall Street demands. Yeah, that's amazing, right? So it's a small governance board, same two owners, same family, into its third generation, fourth generation. And, and they're wonderful people. You know, they they're, um, come from a different background than most of us, but um, in the middle of COVID last year, our, one of our owners walked the floor. And this is when most people were working from home, but our manufacturing people couldn't work from home. They had to come in every day in order to continue to de deliver products to our customers. And they genuinely care about the people. And um, we're very, very fortunate. Uh, yeah, that's an amazing owners. background. And, and as I said at the outset, I think most people don't realize the depth and breadth of, of Victaulic. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the products and how those products are used? We're in piping systems. And if you think about a piping system, we do everything but the pipe. Pipe's a commodity. You're not going to make a lot of money selling pipe. And so we focus on areas where we can add value. So anywhere from a sprinkler line, like the, it, like is in this facility here with this one inch, all the way up to 12 foot water mains in a city. We connect the pipe with, it, with our couplings. Um, we help the pipe change direction with fittings. We help control the flow with, with valves and ancillary products like, like sprinkler heads. And we have over 100,000 products in our portfolio. So diverse from mining to oil and gas to um, air conditioning to fire protection systems. Um, and if you drive down the street in the Lehigh Valley, um, anywhere in the United States, we're probably in, take single family homes out of, out of the equation, we're probably in about 60% of those buildings. A Vic Pro Victaulic products somewhere. Well, so uh, Victaulic is the most dominant company in the market of pipe fittings. Clearly. So clearly. are a lot of those um, developed custom for very specific uh, purposes? You know, historically, they are all kind of one product that would be applied to different markets. But as markets get more specialized and the needs of the customers in those different markets get more specialized, it's required us to develop custom um, products that are, are sp solve a specific customer need that may be different in fire than it is in potable water, drinking water, for example, um, which has allowed us to continue to grow into more market segments and, and really specialize. So hence the uh, focus on research and development, which is really your, your background, your pathway through, which is innovation. Innovation is absolutely key to the company. We started with an innovation. Um, a, a British lieutenant in the military solving a problem of, of how do we get um, fuel and water to the troops, literally in World War I. 1919. 1919, he came up with a way to join pipe faster. And to this day, we have had that long-term focus on customer intimacy, understanding what the customer's problems are, and developing novel, value-added solutions um, that help them do their jobs better. Right. And 13 different manufacturing facilities, are those all domestic, or you have some in, uh, in Europe as well? So um, a lot of what we make is heavy, and we believe in making products close to our customers. So, um, like you said, we have two foundries here in the Lehigh Valley. We have two manufacturing facilities here in the Lehigh Valley. We have a manufacturing facility in um, Leland, North Carolina. And then we have got foundries and manufacturing facilities in, in Mexico, Poland, and China. Um, so we really like to be close to our customers and, and manufacture close to our customers. And, and most recently, and probably most significantly for us here in the Lehigh Valley, uh, taking on an expansion of manufacturing operations with a new facility here uh, in the Lehigh Valley. How is that project going? That project's going fantastic. And, and again, it's another sign of Victaulic's ability to go think long term. Um, we're, and through the, through the pandemic, we've been investing around the world, but most notably here in the Lehigh Valley, a 400,000 square foot facility um, that's allowing us to bring in technology, manufacturing technology, and do things um, safer, better for the environment, and more efficient. Um, it brings jobs to the Lehigh Valley. And even um, more recently, um, we acquired a foundry in Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania, which is in Tyga County. Um, north, central, northeast, um, right on the New York border, and um, allowing us again to bring more jobs to the state. And I'm really proud of, the, of that facility and adding it to our portfolio. So the new facility in the Lehigh Valley, what is the timeline on that? So it is, it is operational today. It's operational we, today. we are moving in and bringing more lines in today. 
um, I think will be fully operational there um, by the early fall. Um, Can you talk a little bit about in a company like Victaulic, the different skill sets, backgrounds, degrees that the workforce needs to have? They range in skill sets from electricians to um, just uh, manual uh, labor to um, maintenance to uh, more and more now we're getting, they're going to need to become computer technicians. And so we have programs that allow our employees to grow within the company and get education and allowing them to continue to be able to um, raise their contribution and raise their compensation in, in, yeah. at the same time. And um, we talk a lot about the evolution of manufacturing in the United States and here we're sitting here today uh, at the former Bethlehem Steel site which is now an arts and cultural facility as you may hear some of the music and dancing going on in the background. When I was growing up in Bethlehem it would be it would have been impossible to imagine both sitting here looking at the blast furnaces and, and listening to a band and dancers uh, outside. Uh, but in that period of time, since steel closed and to where we are today in manufacturing, what's interesting for the Lehigh Valley is manufacturing is still the second biggest part of our economy. We have more than 700 manufacturers, 34,000 people working in it and growing, but the types of skills uh, are very different today. Right now, yeah, I think the United Steelworkers of America are part of Victor. We, we, we have a wonderful relationship with the steelworkers. It's really collaborative. They see, you know, traditionally a union might be upset about bringing in automation, but they see all the other investments we're making in the valley. We're growing our population base um, of, of employees in the Lehigh Valley, and um, the automation just allows us to be more efficient and allow us to, to, again, invest more in the valley and invest more in people in the valley. What's the company's approach towards training? You probably have some very specific skills and equipment that's being used. Um, you have a blend of uh, training with uh, outside entities, education, uh, the institutions, or internal. We, 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 we do a blend of both. Like, like you say, we leverage um, wonderful relationships with Northampton Community College and the other educational institutes in the, in the area. Um, we leverage some um, expertise and things like leadership from outside companies, but, but we have a, a dedicated group to training and development, and we're trying to, to broaden uh, their offerings to touch every function and give everyone an opportunity to grow. Yeah, and on the professional side, I would imagine engineers, material scientists like yourself dealing with different metals and alloys for the, for the pipe fittings. We're heavy, heavy mechanical engineers. Um, material science engineers, um, chemical engineers, you know, the heart of a Victaulic product isn't the, the ductile iron, the metal on the outside, it's the gasket on the inside. Okay. And we've got different gasket technologies that are custom proprietary developed just for Victaulic that can withstand temperatures up to 450 degrees, yeah. um, can withstand chemical attack, and can um, um, be safe for drinking water, which is, which is critical. So a lot of different skill sets all working together. Yeah, it's, what's amazing is the Victaulic product is at the core of almost every industry and every kind of mechanical function that's being assembled uh, in economies here and across the world. And I, when you first came in 12 years ago, t talk a little bit about your trajectory in 12 short years to being named president. I had been at Gore for 14 years uh, and in a variety of positions, both not in Gore-Tex fabric, but in um, industrial products for 11 years and medical products for um, three years. And um, literally, I was putting little um, stents in the GI system um, in the operating room a lot. I wasn't putting them in myself, but our, our, our customers were, were putting them in. And I got a call from a headhunter. And he said, oh, there's this special company in the Lehigh Valley that um, I think you, you, you'd be interested in. And I hadn't talked to a headhunter in a while, but, but I told him, I've got a great job. Yeah. I work for a great company. Why, why should I bother? He said, just, just, just trust me yeah. and give it a shot. And I'd kind of, it, working in medical is fantastic. You feel good about helping people. But the product life cycle is the, to develop a real new product in the medical space is 10 years. And you could fail right up to the very end and start over. And so that can be frustrating. And so I kind of, I've kind of um, missed the days in industrial products. And so I said, okay, I'll come up and look. And, um, you know, John is a, a wonderful closer. Um, so John Malloy was CEO at that time? John, John Malloy was the CEO at that time. John, um, the job description, frankly, the initial job description wasn't, I didn't have passion for. Right. And so I said, John, you know, this is what I love to do. And John, he listens very carefully and he, and he, and he says, okay, what's the best thing? How can we make this a win for personally and win for Victaulic? And we 
kind of crafted a, a different role. And um, you know, I was 14 years at a company. I could have stayed there my whole career and, and, and been very successful. Um, it was a it was a, a risk for us. A little bit. Now, of now had you been box. previous to that? Were you familiar with the Lehigh Valley, or was that your first exposure? Not familiar at all to the Lehigh Valley, yeah. except uh, you know, we live in Chester County, and you'd hear it on the news. And and actually, when we um, told our families that uh, we were moving to the Lehigh or moving to Victaulic in the Lehigh Valley. My wife's parents, who grew up in Philadelphia their whole life, um, almost, almost uh, reacted in, in a little bit of uh, non-belief because they're like, you're going way up north? Yeah, they, they thought you were moving to Scranton, right? They, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was almost like, do they have running water there? Right, right. Do they have electricity? Right. That, that was my experience in, in Philadelphia. I went to Villanova and I worked in Philadelphia for a while and everybody in Philadelphia thought once you went north of the the Turnpike, it was Scranton and the Poconos, yep, and yep, they kind of exactly. skipped over Lehigh Valley. I think that's exactly. changing now. <laughs> it's changing. I think, now. You know, I think we, we've helped to change that. But so you're, uh, you came up to the Lehigh Valley, and, and uh, what, what were your impressions and thoughts of uh, making a life here? Our story's a little different than, than most, maybe. So yeah. again, 12 years ago, I started at Victaulic, and coming from Chester County, and my wife having family in Philadelphia, we thought, let's split the difference. Let's live in Doylestown, which is a wonderful town. Um, yeah. um, and let's, we'll, we'll be close to work, uh, commute up to Easton, we'll be close to family, we'll be close to our old friends. And um, we did that for a couple years and um, we realized we were far from everything. And the nice thing is in those couple years, um, you know, I'd come up for work obviously, but my wife Amy would come up for company events and, mm -hmm. and um, regional events and we really, um, were attracted, fell in love, if you will, with the Lehigh Valley. Um, again, Doylestown was a great town, but maybe a little too close to Philadelphia. And, and we felt the people here are so much warmer, uh, more genuine, um, when we thought, wow, what a wonderful place for us to raise our, our, our two kids. And um, so eight years ago, uh, we moved up and um, um, have uh, been delighted with that decision ever since. Now, how old are the kids now? Zoe's 11, okay. and she makes sure I know every day that she's in charge, <laughs> and Grayson's 14. Yeah. And they, they make us proud every day, and they make us shake our heads every day. <laughs> We're blessed to have them. Yeah, that, that's great, that's, that's great. So coming up to, then coming up into the Lehigh Valley and being at Victaulic within the company, what, um, what were your experiences, backgrounds that led you to the chairmanship? Victaulic's always had a history of innovation and innovation being so important. And, um, you know, I really enjoyed working cross-functionally with our partners in sales, with our partners in manufacturing, finance, et cetera. And um, in order to, to really be innovative, um, it's not an engineering sport. It's a cross-functional sport. So it requires everyone to work together collaboratively and constructively. And so, um, you know, that gave me exposure to all, all, all parts of the business. And um, the way John coordinated things and ran everything is we had a, an executive team that really would um, work together on all aspects of the business. Right. So I got exposure to all those things, um, spent a lot of time with our customers, which is critical to really understand what the customer's challenges are, yeah. um, really listening to the customers. So is that where some of the uh, patents come from, with listening to the customers and developing new products uh, that then you apply for a, a patent on that product? That, that, that's exactly where, where, where the patents come from. You, you really need to listen to the customers and watch the customers, what they do every day. Um, most of the time, I, I like to say, if a customer can say, I need X, Y, Z, we're too late. Um, we, we solve problems that customers have that they just take for granted. Well, this is the way I've always done it, and I guess this is the only way to do it. And we look at it and go, there's got to be a better way to do that. And can we come up with a novel idea that can add value and um, improve our customers' um, lives and experiences? And um, you know, we, we've got over 5,000 patents around the world, um, all aimed at how do we um, protect that investment we have in, in research and development. Yeah, that's fascinating. Uh, I think it's probably the first time anybody here has ever heard that because Victaulic is a company just doing their thing. Your sales are to very specific customers. Yep. Right? You're not selling yep. to the general public. Right. So you really don't have a need to market or brand the name beyond uh, those companies that are buying the products, uh, mostly for construction uh, purposes, right? Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Pre pre precisely. Yeah. Yeah, but um, the hundred year anniversary though, that was uh, what, that was 2019. 2019, so right it's the hundredth anniversary the of the patent, really. Okay, 
Uh, that's what it is, the original patent right. which created right. And the original company wasn't called Victaulic, I believe. So Victaulic is a mashup of Victory and Hydraulics. So Victory, World War I, um, coming out of World War I, and um, they combined the two, and, um, um, and that's where Victaulic came from. And the patent holders, um, Mr. Heelshaw and Mr. Tribe in, in England, they licensed the patents out around the world. And um, our, the owners of Victaulic now around the world bought the U.S. patent rights first and then ended up buying the rights um, f from the other regions. That's interesting. So um, with Victaulic making product, as you d explained earlier, close to your customers, which makes sense because of the weight and the cost of transporting it, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about manufacturing in the United States and manufacturing overseas and what you see as really the, the future for manufacturing in the U.S. There's a lot of talk now in a lot of product lines about reshoring, about shortening supply lines, about technology enabling American manufacturing to grow uh, as we move maybe away from that. W what are your uh, kind of forecasts or views of comparisons around uh, global manufacturing in the future for the U.S.? You know, first of all, I think we take for granted in the U.S. Um, the wonderful work ethic that we have. And, and honestly, we don't see that in other regions of the world. Um, they're wonderful people, but um, people, especially here in the Lehigh Valley, they've grown up making things and they've grown up um, doing things with their hands and having that, 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 that passion for that. So we love that, that work ethic and that mentality. And um, you know, we are investing, like I said, around the world today. We're building facilities around the world, but we're investing faster in the U.S. than we're investing elsewhere. Um, a majority of our customers are in the U.S., and so we need to grow with them. Uh, we need to shorten supply chains, and we need to, frankly, um, insulate ourselves versus some of the um, political turmoil between the U.S. and China and tariffs and, and um, duties and VAT and things more like that. Stability. Right. More, st more, more stability. Yeah. More stability. More yeah. stability. Yeah. That's what we always hear from uh, <laughs> our companies. Stability is a good thing. Predictability, yep. rule of law, yep. Yep. all those things matter. But that's an interesting comment about manufacturing globally versus mm -hmm. domestically. With a large workforce here in the Lehigh Valley of more than 1,200 people, uh, what do you find in your, your talent here in the Lehigh Valley? Incredibly blessed to work with the, the folks I get to work with. You know, our success is, is team success. And the dedication, um, the um, long tenure of, of many people, the yeah. commitment um, has always been there and has always driven the company's success. And we saw it most notably last year, you know, in the middle of COVID. People were struggling. People had um, childcare commitments. People had uh, elderly parents that they were, were mentally um, challenged with. And, our and as you said, they still had to show up. They still because had the product to show up. had to be made. Um, and so, yeah. so the folks who worked in the factory and in our, in our lab, they had to show up and they did. Um, and the folks who um, um, could work from home, they had figured out how could they could be productive. And, um, you know, couldn't have been prouder of the, the dedication, again, the commitment to our, our uh, communal success. And um, that shows the quality of people, again, again that I'm, I'm, I feel fortunate to work with every day. That's great. The materials that you're using in the fittings, um, are they coming globally? So, um, you know, Another thing, people look at our, our couplings and figure, well, somebody must be mining that material and, and bringing it to our, our foundries. Um, most of the metal in our, our products are scrap steel. So they're, they're old, old appliances, they're, they're old cars, they're um, you know, scrap steel that's being recycled. It's um, melted in our facilities and, and turned into uh, a new product. Um, so um, again, another thing that helps us feel good about the environment and, and yes. the impact that we're having on the environment. That's, a, that's really interesting. Um, if um, you could describe a little bit your leadership style. I'm about as polar opposite you could be from a micromanager. Um, you know, I, I remember a conversation when I was interviewing with John Malloy and he asked me a, a very similar question and, and I said, you know, I, I, I believe in hiring really smart people and working with really smart people, getting everyone aligned and then get out of their way. And John was just nodding his head. He said, that's exactly what, 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 how I like to operate, you know, because they're you're hired to them because they're smart, and you put them in the position because they're smart. And if you try to do their job for them, one, they're going to be demotivated. They're probably going to leave. And two, they're going to do a better job if you just let them do their job than you could doing their job. And that's why you're paying them. That, right? That's <laughs> why you're paying them, uh, precisely. And so yeah. um, constructive conflict, um, you know, in order to innovate again, you need people to challenge and not sit on their hands and say, that was a horrible idea. Um, say, 
that was a, that's a good idea, but I have this problem with it. And that's how you then solve that problem, solve the next problem. And, um, you know, it's, uh, before I knew it was a term, but um, servant leadership. And, um, you know, I, I tell new people who come to Victaulic, my job is to help them be as successful as they possibly can be. Because if everybody that works at Victaulic is successful as they possibly can be, the company's yeah. as successful as, as we can be. Yeah, and I will say after just spending a short time talking to you, I think the future of Victaulic is br very bright and it's gonna continue to be a great place to work. Uh, over 1,200 employees in the Lehigh Valley, all different educational backgrounds, skill sets, uh, critical company for us here critical company in the United States and, and in the world uh, and has had great leadership and that great uh, leadership is uh, continuing with you, Rick. So thank you for your company's commitment to being here. Uh, to what you're doing. Unfortunately, we are out of time already. <laughs> I felt like we could have talked for another half hour uh, because it's a fascinating story. Uh, but I, I really want to thank Rick uh, Booker, the president um, and CEO of Victaulic. Thank you for, for joining us and everything you're doing here in the Lehigh Valley. Thank you, Don. We're proud to be members of the Lehigh Valley. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Nestor, president and chief executive officer at Lehigh Valley Health Network. At LVHN, we offer nationally recognized care close to home. Today and every day, our focus is on the health of our community. We know that a healthy community paves the way for a healthy economy. We're proud to partner with Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation as we work together to make the Lehigh Valley strong, vibrant, and safe. At Capital Blue Cross, there are more yeses and fewer noes protecting your health and making it easier so you can spend time on what makes you smile. Helping our communities, your families, your businesses, big and small. We have you covered, going the extra mile. It's what we do. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. The new executive series would not be possible without the tremendous support of our sponsors. Thank you to all of our sponsors who have continuously supported the LVDC mission during this time. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Lehigh Valley Health Network. Our premier sponsor, Capital Blue Cross. Gold sponsor, Fitzpatrick Lenson Buba. Our event sponsors, Boyle Construction, Clunk and Milan Advertising, and Olympus Corporation of the Americas. Thank you to our interview sponsor, Victaulic. Our production sponsor, Countess Communications, and our hosts throughout the Lehigh Valley. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. We hope you enjoy the new executive series.